wedging, in addition to preparing the clay, kind of like introduces you to the clay. So it's like kind of shaking hands with the clay. So I'm kind of getting the clay moving in a circle and I'm de-airing it. Slapping it. So I'm going to add a little bit of a little bit of water so that the clay will will stick to the surface. Uh, so the first thing I want to do in terms of throwing is I need to center the clay. So I'm going to put the clay down. So I want to make sure that I'm compressing this clay and I'll do something that's called coning. So I'm bringing the clay up a little bit. And then I'll bring it back down. Then I'll do this a couple times to really center this entire piece. And have a little bit wider base before I start. Um, so now my, now my clay is centered and I have it about the right diameter that I want. So the next part is to open it up. So I'm going to start pressing down a little bit in the center. You know, and in one sense, it's already a vessel. It's a very shallow, thick-walled vessel, but this is, it's the beginning of, of being a vessel. So now I'll open it up even more. So I'm gonna bring this, this form down, and how far I come down, again, is predetermined by how, big, how, how I want the bottom of the piece uh, to be, how big a foot I want it to have, if I want it to have a foot, how thick um, the floor should be. So all, again, all of that I've already kind of have in my head. So right now I am thinking about how wide I want my piece on the inside. But that looks like a good size for the interior. And I'm gonna compress my clay here. Um, so I'm gonna bring this up. So I'll do this a number of times going down to the bottom. And bring that clay up. Same on the inside. Now I start to think about the next step, which would be thinking about the shape. I can't have the belly go from all the way to here to here and then think I'm going to be able to really have a shoulder or a neck or an ellipse. So I've got to think about the different segments of this um, and, um, and just kind of imagine in my mind's eye where it's going to go. So I'm going to bring the top in a little bit because it's a little wide. Narrow it a little bit because I don't want it to get too out of control. If it gets too wide, the clay really stretches and it's really hard to bring it back in. So I want to try and keep this rim under control. 
shape into something that's got a little bit more, a little bit more belly. I'm going to compress this clay before I stretch it a little bit more. So I'm not really changing the contour so much, it's just giving a little bit of compression and strength to the clay. Um, so I'll go back in and I'll stretch some more. So I'm, this part in here, I'm going to have be neck, shoulders. I'm going to bring this in a little bit more. So we'll see where, we'll see how far this shape can go. Done with my shape, then I'm going to compress as much as I can and, uh, and then leave it alone. And then just leave it alone. So I'm basically going to work from uh, the top up. And we'll see a couple of times. smooth and to compress that rim too. To compress and strengthen. And, you know, if I wanted to put like a really sharp line in there, I could do that. Um, you know, if we make that, I could use, so say the corner, you know, to, to incise um, a really sharp edge right there. You know, the Greeks did a lot of segmenting their pots along the, the vertical axis. And so they might create an area on the neck that they would, would use some sort of geometric design. And they might delineate where the shoulder would be so that you have, you start thinking about this the pot in different areas. If you're telling a story um, through pictures, you know, you might have this be one, you know, this might be the, the prologue and here's the main story and usually something decorative up in here. So, um, and even if these incise lines don't stay, they, um, just having it, just having it there again, helps you think about how to um, how to allocate your space, and it's really easy to change um, at this stage. If you thought like, oh, that's just a little too too much space, you know, you can take that out and put it up a little bit higher. So it's a pretty it's it's a pretty blank canvas at this point. That every day in the studio is another opportunity to learn, to explore, to try something. You're still gonna get. Um, you're still going to have this this moment of uncertainty, um, and you're going, to, and that's what that's what you kind of live for. Because if if everything was totally certain, it'd be I think we'd all be bored.